Welcome back students who are taking math for business and finance and math applications. Um, in this series of videos, we're going to be working on the chapter 16 drill problems, the odd numbered problems that were assigned in your digital study guide. And as always, if you uh, don't understand something, feel free to pause, rewind, uh, watch the video again. And if you still don't understand something, you know, telephone and speak with an instructor or contact us via email. Okay, so um, uh, let's get to it. Um, and um, in looking at drill problem one here, it says, as the accountant for Ron's Donut Shop, prepare a December 31st, 2015 balance sheet like that for the card shop, um, lesson unit 16-1, from the following. And then it has cash is 40,000, accounts payable is 28, merchandise inventory is 14, Vic Sullivan Capital is 46000 and equipment is 20000 Now, before I get started here, um, I had said that uh, uh, formatting of financial statements is important. Okay? Um, in the doing, uh, when people are taking the financial accounting subject, they have a greater project that they have to do. And also in the bookkeeping, there is a greater project that has to be done. And the question comes up, uh, can I, you know, what can I do it in Excel or Word? Even though they're told to do it in Word, Microsoft Word, students want to do it in, in Excel. And that's fine as long as you're able to use, you know, you're like an expert user in Excel and you're able to format the financial statements so that they look the way they're supposed to. Because with Excel, you can actually um, hide the lines between the cells so that it looks like a Word document. Okay? But the setup of that is quite tedious and, uh, and time-consuming, especially for those, pro those projects. So um, we always recommend that you do things in Word. And in the workplace, people will um, do the math in Excel and then export or copy that information over into a Word document because a Word document is much, much cleaner and easier to use um, when formatting. Um, even if you don't know how to use Word, I mean, you can tab and space just like it was a typewriter, you know, for those of us who remember what a typewriter is. Um, you know, it's, it's just easier to use. So for these problems, um, the drill problems, the Word problems, I mean, I am not going to reproduce forms and then trying to type into them and whatever have you. I'm using a digital pen and I'm going to write. Um, so, you know, bear with the formatting issues as it's not going to look pretty. Um, but I am going to put things in the right place um, and, you know, meet all of the format requirements. It's just not going to look pretty. That's all it, it, I have to say about that. So. Let's continue on with uh, drill problem 16-1 here. Now, what they're doing is, is they're giving us, um, get my pen, there's my pen. Um, they're telling us that we're to prepare a December 31st balance sheet. Okay, so in preparing a balance sheet, come on pen, um, we're going to have Ron's Donut Shop. Uh, the heading is important, okay, and it's going to, um, the name of the uh, report, the statement is a balance sheet, and the date is December 31st, 2015. Now, this can be done one of two ways. Um, it could be, you could just put in the date, um, and you write out the full month. You don't write a DEC and then put a period or right? you don't abbreviate December okay. but you put in the date or you can put the date and it can be written like this as of December 31st 2015 of course this would be uh, center aligned okay um, and again I'm just uh, you know bear with how uh, things look Okay, so on the left-hand side, we're going to have our assets. And on the right-hand side, we're going to have the, our liabilities. 
Okay, and remember that um, down at the uh, its assets is equal to liability, so we're going to have a section for um, owner's equity. Okay. Now, these accounts here are not in any specific order. I mean, it says cash of 40,000, accounts payable 28, merchandise inventory 14. Okay, so they're not in any specific order, so it's up to you to know what accounts go in which place, in under which category. Now, the definition of an asset is anything that the company owns, OWNS. Okay, the definition of a liability is anything that the company owes, OWES. And equity is the investment in the business or the net worth. Okay. So when you're looking at these accounts, you have to kind of like determine um, what accounts go where. Right? So cash um, is an asset and that's 40,000. So we'll write cash and write out the $40,000 right here and put in our dollar sign. That's important. Now in a column, you only have to put a dollar sign at the very t uh, first number in the column. You don't have to put a dollar sign next to all of the other numbers. But you do have to put the dollar sign when you total it up. Okay, And you'll see as I do that here. Okay, So accounts payable is something that we owe, so that would go under liabilities. And we write out the whole word, accounts payable. And in this column here, we're going to write um, 28,000. Okay, so merchandise inventory, you know, that's something we own, all right? So that's an asset. So we write merchandise. Okay, now I'm abbreviating here, okay? Um, only because of space and my having the hand right here, okay? But realize that this all would be. All of these here would be lined up in the same exact column. There wouldn't be any indentation, and I would write out the words merchandise inventory. But because I'm doing this by hand here um, and without lines and using a digital tablet, you know, just bear with the way things are, but pay attention to what I am telling you to do because really you're never going to handwrite. Your financial statements are always going to be typed. Okay. All right, so then the next thing we have is Vic Sullivan Capital. All right. Well, Capital is an investment in the business. So under owner's equity, we're going to put Vic Sullivan, comma, and then the word capital. And that amount, notice I put a dollar sign. That amount is 46000 Okay, and the last thing we have is equipment for 20000 Equipment is something we own. So... That goes over here in the asset side. Now notice I didn't put the dollar sign here because this is a, a column that we're going to be adding up and I put the dollar sign uh, the very first figure in the column. Also um, when you were looking at the theory videos notice how this here uh, financial statement is much more simplistic than what was in the uh, theory videos, okay, or even when you're looking at the formatted uh, balance sheet in the textbook. I mean, in there it had current assets and current liabilities and property, plant, and equipment, okay, and long term liabilities, all right. Um, all financial statements follow the same generally accepted accounting principles, but you know, you don't have to use certain things. Um, in, in what you do with your financial statement. That's why you can have two businesses that are the same, but their financial statements can look completely different. I mean, yes, I could have gone and went and said, okay, for my assets and started, you know, had created a current asset and all I would have done is put cash underneath that, okay, and then merchandise inventory. And then I could have had property, plant, and equipment and then put equipment. But since I'm, this is a very simplistic financial statement, there's not many accounts here. I don't really need to, to do all of that. Um, and anyone who's looking at it, you know, who understands financial statements would know that cash is a, is a current asset. Now, the bigger the company, 
um, and this is getting into a lot, lot more in depth beyond the scope of this book. But the bigger the company is, what ends up happening is, is you end up with a lot more accounts and everything is summarized. Um, like for example, you're going to have just one account called accounts payable, even though you might have 30 vendors. You're going to have one account called accounts receivable, even though you might have 75 customers. Okay. Um, when you're looking at the equity section, okay, um, you know, you're, you would have to list, if this is a sole proprietorship, you're going to list, you know, the capital accounts for each one of the people. But when you're talking about uh, a company that's incorporated, well, if there's only one shareholder, it's just going to say common stock, okay? But if you have, if you're a Microsoft or a Google or whatever, and, you know, you have, you know, a billion people that have bought in the stock, it's still only going to say common stock. Okay, it's not going to list the billion people. All right, so just be aware that um, you know doing the homework problems here is important because if you didn't do the homework problems and you know those people who don't and they jump back into the you know their they have a test question and they jump back into the the text material and are trying to look it up. And trying to copy and mimic from what's in the textbook in the chapter, you know, they're going to get it wrong because they're not learning what I'm telling you right now, okay? Because they're not doing the homework problems. So, you know, be happy that you're doing the homework problems to pick up this extra information, okay? Okay, so those are our accounts. And so now we have to do some totaling, okay? And that means we have to, you know, use underlines, okay? So, um, when I'm going to add up my assets, okay, I put in one underline. That that means there's a calculation there, and I my description is going to be total assets. And I put my dollar sign because of the mathematical calculation, and this comes out to seventy-four thousand dollars. And since it's the end of a calculation, I have to double underline. 74,000. That means it's the end. Nothing more comes after that. Now, why is that important? Well, let's take a look up here at accounts payable. Okay. Notice that there's only one account underneath accounts payable. Okay. Um, because the accounting equation is assets is equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. Okay. My total liabilities are 28,000, and I'm going to add it to my equity here. Now, I could have drawn an underline underneath this and wrote an indented and wrote total liabilities, and I'm abbreviating liabilities here, and put the 28,000 again here. Okay, but I wouldn't underline this because I'm going to use that number to add to this number. So there, this is not the end of a calculation, okay? But notice what I've done is I've just repeated that information. So because there's only one account here and it's very simplistic, okay, we're not going to include the total liabilities because you can see that the total liabilities is just this one account. And it's the same thing with the owner's equity. I only have one account here, okay? So I don't need to, you know, underline and write total you know, owner's equity, and I'm going to abbreviate here, and put the 46,000 here. Okay. Now, notice that I have an issue here if I do do it this way, okay? Um, because I can't easily sum up the total liabilities plus the total, total owner's equity. For me to be able to do it that way, what I would have to do is I would have to, all right, take and put my 28,000 here, draw my underline, write my total liability here, and put the total amount over here in a second column. And I would have to do the same thing with the capital account by putting the 46,000 here, draw the underline, and write it here. Okay, the reason why is because this is a mathematical calculation in order to get that number. This is a mathematical calculation in order to get that number. This is a mathematical calculation here that we're going to underline and then call that our 
total liabilities, and I'm, I'm abbreviating liability, and I'm abbreviating owner's equity, even though I'm supposed to write it all out, but I'm running out of space. And then I would put the amount of $74,000 right here and double underline it because it's the end of a calculation. Notice that I have one calculation here and uh, my total amount goes in the next column. I have I don't uh, double underline it because it's not the end of a calculation. The same thing with the equity. I move it over here but because in, in the, the different column. But because these two numbers are added together, there's a calculation there, and that's why I put an underline there. I do the math, and then I double underline. So that's one way of doing it, but because this is um, relatively simple, there's... Uh, you know, no, there's, you know, just one account for liabilities and one account for equity. I'm going, I end up putting the 28,000 here. I don't have to put in the total liabilities. And I put the 46,000 here for my equity. Yes, I do draw an, uh, an underline. Yes, I do write total liabilities owner's equity and I put the total amount here and I double underline that showing it's the end of the calculation and then notice that my assets of 74,000 equals right let me it equals right the total liabilities and owner's equity of 74,000 okay so when all is said and done that's similar to what uh, my balance sheet should look like, okay, without all of this extra stuff in here. All right, so I hope you got all of that. Um, I'm going to, you know, that's it for this video. If you have any questions on that, you know, feel free and, to, you know, call and speak with an instructor. I mean, I realize that when you're working on it for the first time, it can be a little bit confusing. Um, you know, you'll get accustomed to you know, the actual format, and then what ends up being the most difficult thing is, you know, looking at these accounts and trying to decide where they belong on the balance sheet. You can't just take it as a list and just put it down. You have to think about what the account is, whether it's an asset, a liability, or owner's equity, and put it in its proper place. Okay, so if you have any questions, you know, watch this video again or, you know, telephone and speak with an instructor. See you in the next video.